I'm going to do a little experiment today on torch tips. This is a number four tip. You can't read that very well, but and it just has a flat surface and a very straight hole for the orifice. And what that does is produces a really long needle-like flame that is ideal in some applications but in others you would rather have it be a feathered flame with a lot of power rather than a, a long dart sometimes that darts hard to manage and it focuses too much heat in one spot and what I learned from experiments on this particular bit here is this is a gas stove spud and what they've done is put a bezel on the spud I don't know how well you can see that. I'm not sure what the degree is on that bezel, but I'm pretty sure that it has something to do with the reason this won't produce a needle like flame at high flow rates. It produces a feathered, like spread out heat flame. I do have footage of this torch in operation. It's actually making a turbo flame, so the actual length not going to be shown. Yeah, it didn't want turbo flame on me, so it's down about seven centimeters on the turbo flame. Anyway, what I'm going to do is take a drill bit and see if this angle, which is very slight, I think that's only like 10 degrees or something, now I'm going to drill in to the tip of this bit and see if that gives me a, a jet flame at, at high flow rates. But before I do that, I'm going to get the torch fired up and we're going to look at what this torch tip does at a couple of particular wattage readings and then I'm going to drill into it with this bit for the first test and then I've got a couple of diamond tip bits here that might give us some type of turbulence that would give me that feathered flame. Not necessarily feathered, but it's something I call a turbo flame. I have some footage of this flame on a couple of other videos and it basically spreads the heat out rather than focuses it on a super tiny point, which is just not very effective in most applications. It does have its purposes, but I'm just trying to make it work a little better. Okay, at about 10 amps there. This thing is just roaring like crazy. Shoot. You can see the flames actually all the way over there. So this thing is way longer than we can see. It's about 5 amps. So as you just seen by that, even though <laughs> still looking at about seven centimeters, it doesn't look like it, but still at about five amps. There's a nice black spot for us. You can kind of see that feather going way out there. And it's not quite as long as it was earlier. Pressure's probably going down. Okay, so there's 5 amps. So we've got the 10 amp and the 5 amp. I'm going to go ahead and bezel the inside tip there. Just a quick little side note before I actually test this bezel I've just put on here. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that. There it is. That's just a slight bezel I've put on that. I'm going to test that at the two amperages we just seen and see if it's sufficient to cause turbulence to give us a uh, more of a spread out flame instead of that laser beam so there's the five amps Definitely yellower. Must be some copper particles. There it 
There it is. Look at 14 amps AC. About 1400 watts. Look how tiny that is. That is the turbo flame I've been trying to get. Just hope I can maintain that. And as soon as I say that, it dies. That's at 8 amps and it didn't really do anything. So what I'm going to do now is do what it takes to make it happen. And get some footage of that. That's a number 5 tip. Almost there, but not quite. The, the smaller tip just was blowing out when it would get to the turbo flame. It was just too unstable. That's at about 15 amps right there. I know that doesn't mean anything. I keep it at amperage because I know at about 15 amps I'm going to blow my power. That's the wattage. 1600 watts. It's on the verge of a turbo flame, but not quite there yet. Real close. Normally this would be about 16 inches long though with the number 5 tip. I should have did it before. A little bit better though. Definitely reduced the length and panned it out some. And there it is. The turbo flame. Typically this flame would be 16 to 18 inches long. I do regret not taking it before and after on this number five tip. Basically, the bezel has just fattened up the flame and made it shorter. Which is gonna make it more manageable in applications like soldering. This little joint right here I'm gonna work. That took a lot of power to do that though. 1800 watts. This here is a gas stove spud that I just attached to my number six tip. And as soon as the amperage goes up, it'll get a lot bigger. I'm only at 10 amps right now because it's so cold. I'm at 54 degrees. That's a little bright. So there's almost 12 amps. Still doesn't seem to shrink any, but it will. And that's when we'll be at the turbo flame. I don't know what to call this flame. I've been looking all over in open literature to find out if it's called the turbulent flame or or what. I'm not talking about the terminology regarding nomenclature such as reducing flame, oxidizing flame, stuff like that. This is a whole different flame. It, it is none of those flames. So, when this gets up to about 15 amps, we're gonna see how much it shrank. Okay, there is about 14 and a half amps. It's getting shorter. Now the other torch tips I have, and we're going to observe this here in a second, they don't behave this way. The more you increase the wattage, the longer the flame gets. And I don't need a two foot long flame, it's just hard to manage. So we're approaching 15 amps here, and we're definitely getting to the turbo flame. You can't see it as well as I can off camera, but it's got a nice feather going towards the edge, edge there. Yeah, just a darker spot to look at it. Okay, we're at 15 amps. And I've got a really nice turbo flame going here. And for some of you guys that are really into the numbers, I'm sorry I keep calling this off an amps. That's just what I use to know when I'm about to blow my fuse. That's 1,500 watts, 1,600 watts actually. And this is the flame I'm getting. 
which is far different from the typical two foot long five liter per minute flame we're used to seeing. I'm really liking this. There's this other guy that lives in Belgium or something that has a torch that can adjust sort of the way a Pelton wheel turbine does. It's got an adjustment screw on the back. But I haven't been able to find anything like that over here. Get a real nice feather going to it now. Get about 11 centimeters. Well, get the parallax out of that. Maybe about seven centimeters now. Now we are at turbo flame. I'm going to hit this rod with it, just to see how long it takes to get me a red hot heat. Getting red pretty quick. Try not to look at it step through through the camera. It will cut this if I hold it right. So, not too shabby. Okay, my alarm's about to go off here. Yeah. Well, that's 17 amps. What about 1700 watts there? That's probably about six liters per minute, I think. By the way, we're getting up there. So there it is, the turbulent flame, and a lot of that's due to the slight bezel that is in the tip of this bit. I'll try and get a focus on that in a bit, but very cool. Okay, so here is the tip. The same tip with that bezel spud removed. Look at how long that thing is. Now it's actually longer than that ruler. I can kind of see it. There's, it's really windy right here too. But this thing is uh, fairly huge. That is same 1700 amps or 1700 watts I'm sorry 1800 watts which is like 17 amps AC pulling out of my wall there pretty furious flame so you see the spud is definitely helping out now if I were to try to do anything delicate with this it's just out of the question and I've destroyed some things with this freaking lightsaber in the past Okay, so I have the copper discharge line connected. Or actually, it's not the discharge, I'm sorry, that's the intake. I have the copper intake line connected. It's not quite as pretty as the discharge, but this is going to be an open head unit. As far as I'm not going to weld this back together. The reason I did that is I wanted to eliminate this oil reservoir from the gas stream. Okay, this thing hasn't cooled down much. It's just for comparison. That's just some oxide heat now. That's not red hot metal. Impressive at all.
ain't so bad, I guess, as far as time. So that's about how much heat we were cranking out of little flame. And this is one of those high dollar swirl burn tips. And that is a nice flame. So, I paid about 50 bucks for that. It was worth it though.